so since we started talking about sexual, human sexual um, de the development and sexual reproduction, we, we, we talked about a lot of things. So I just want to do a quick review to make sure you guys understand what's important to know about this. You have to know the importance of the haploid cells and why they need to be half cells so that the, the diploid number is restored and you don't have gathering of DNA over time. You have to know the, that, uh, why the difference between an egg and a sperm and the difference about how the processes that make them. You have to know what fertilization is. You have to know what implantation is, which is the process of actually, you have to know the basic differences between male and female anatomy, but not too much in detail. We, we do that in the anatomy quiz, so not, don't worry about that for now. You do have to know the menstrual cycle in the sense of that the general idea that what is actually happening here is that the, the, the female body is preparing for the implantation of the embryo and that hormones actually control this process and then you have a temperature spike right before uh, for, uh, ovulation takes place and that the when the system is not needed, that, that's what in, initiates the menses and the, and the bleeding of the vaginal thing and that the fertilization period is actually days before that because the the egg needs to be in the right place and meet the sperm deep into the fallopian tube so that, that the, the egg can develop and the embryo can develop enough to get to, to, to the implantation stage on time. Uh, so we talked about all of this already. Uh, you have to do idea about ovulation, which is when the follicle actually exits the, the, the ovaries. And if it doesn't do that, it goes into the carpus luteum, which it basically uh, it will basically become a failed egg. And um, you have to know about the fertilization and why it's only one sperm can get inside because of the process of the entrance with the, where the acrosome connects to the wall and then the cortical granule inside the egg connects to that and creates a shield that protects from any more sperm to get inside. And remember that that fertilization has to happen at a specific time when the egg is deep within the fallopian tube, otherwise it will not undergo differentiation and, and fast enough to successfully implant with the endometrium of the uterus. We talked about implantation and that's just the process of attaching itself to the nucleus, uh, so to the uterine wall that had been prepared during the menstrual cycle for that. And then we also talked about the stages of the formation of the embryo. You have to you have to know the difference between a zygote, which is just basically the first cell, an embryo, which is the growing, um, developing uh, organism. Uh, as soon as it becomes multicellular, you can already call it an embryo. A marula, which is just a ball of cells. A blastula, which is a ball of cells in a circular, hollow shape that then undergoes gastrulation to form different layers into what's called a gastrula, which then differentiates to form a neurula, which then differentiates further to form an actual fetus. And we, we, we also talk about the, the protective layers that are surrounding the actual growing uh, embryo, which is the chorion and the anion. We need to know that the chorion is the outside of the protective layer, and the anion is just basically the, the layer that, protect, that holds the amniotic fluid, which is uh, something that the baby uses to, to grow, uh, to, uh, um, both to be inside of that watery environment to sustain the baby around, and also to produce, uh, there's some nutrients there and also some excrement from the baby all mixed in together there. And you also have the umbilical cord which connects the baby directly to the mother for gas exchange and nutrient delivery. And that until that is fully developed, the baby consumes and nutrients out of the yolk sac which was produced uh, based on the egg in order to, for the embryo to survive. And the placenta is the complex structure where actually the blood of the baby and the mom are never actually exchanged, but the nutrients and gases are exchanged across the capillaries of both ends. So you gotta know that, that, that about the gestation support system, basically. Uh, you also have to have a general idea of the fetal stages, the idea that in the beginning, it's very undifferentiated and that all you have is this thing that first looks like a chicken, then like a reptile, then a fish, and then eventually it will look like an actual human embryo and uh, by the 23rd day and then after the 23rd day it will continue developing into different things including uh, different stages uh, of development which will make all kinds of, uh, of, of things and I'll also notice something here is what I actually have to start talking about things which will uh, make the pregnancy succeed or not now look look how in the beginning prenatal death that's before the actual fetus happens all right, uh, before two weeks, before it's actually successfully uh, differentiated into a, something that looks like a human, uh, it's not yet susceptible to, to, to chemicals from the outside of the body, but a lot of things happen. It, 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 it can not, not implant successfully. The embryo could uh, have a de genetic defect, which makes it not differentiate uh, uh, properly. And so a lot of things could happen before the actual embryo develops into a fetus. Now, anomalies will, will happen early in the embryo if there's some sort of genetic defect or if the or if there's a, a, a functional defect because of, of the way the fetus grew or because of exposure to chemicals. So 
there are some things which can actually the baby is very 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 gentle between three and eight weeks and it's 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 uh, it's exposed it, it, it's uh, susceptible to uh to chemicals which can destroy the pregnancy called teratogen teratogens which can actually cause problems they chemical lots of chemicals like cigarette smoke and, uh, and uh, um, alcohol consumption and a lot of other things can actually cause these problems so and there's also other things that could happen naturally because of genetic defects or because of functional problems during the growth as well now as the systems develop if there's some sort of congenital defect or or exposure to uh, uh, other things the baby will not develop f further because you see the nervous system develops from all the way through it but the heart will be fully developed by the by almost by week eight and so will the limbs and so forth so this will show you how the, the, the stages at which the embryo is susceptible for problems in the development of those features. So eyes, eyes will develop between 4 and 38 weeks. So uh, usually in the first uh, th three weeks, for example, it will be susceptible to chemical uh, anomalies or congenital anomalies. After that, it will, it, will, it will be more susceptible to functional defects, or in other words, things about the growth process or exposure to chemicals. Um, so the red bars... Ex uh, 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 representing problems that occurred because of congenital or genetic problems. The yellow bars uh, represent things which are uh, periods where the fetus would have problems with that system if it was a problem in the growth or the way it divided or because mostly because of the environment where the baby is trying to grow. And see, the way the baby grows, therefore, is the combination of the, of the fetal environment or the body of the mom and also the, the congenital genetic things and so there's a lot of things that can cause the baby to not have successful pregnancy uh, if the hormonal control of pregnancy has a defect the baby won't be born at the right time uh, uh, pregnancy might not uh, the birth will not start at the right time uh, it might cause uh, brain damage and things like that and hormones also control as fast as the baby grows and the formation of the placenta and all of that also Sometimes the fetus grows because it implants the wrong way. It, it, it actually grows wrong, you know. So that so that's what we call the function defects when the baby grows in a in a in an in incorrect way. And also sometimes it grows misplaced. You know, remember that the head has to face down in order for the birth to happen normally. So it, sometimes the fetus fails because it. Uh, it grows wrong, you know. Also, there could be maternal conditions. The mom can have defects on the uterus and its uterine system that can lead to, to problems and, and the baby formation. Also, there's genetic conditions. We talked about congenital conditions. The embryo itself is defective. And there's also environmental effect or exposure to chemicals which can cause uh, more functional problems or anomalies, which we, we talk about that. And notice that at the end of the development, you're going to get basically functional defects and minor anomalies. In other words, the baby can probably still make it. But if the problems happen in the beginning, you're going to have too much of a problem. The baby probably will not make it because it will be major anomalies on the, on the, on the baby. And so towards the end of the development of the system is where, is where the baby is more, less susceptible to problems but more, uh, but more susceptible to chemicals. And earlier, it's more susceptible to, to genetic defects, but it will also cause death if the, if the baby... Uh, don't do it. So that's why you have stillbirths. That's why you have uh, things like uh, miscarriages. That's when uh, something went wrong in the actual either the implant implantation or the formation of the placenta or the growth process or the baby had a genetic problem and things like that. So a lot of things have to be right in order for the baby to successfully reach the point of birth. And we, which we talked about last time. And so make sure you, you uh, uh, review these things and learn about uh, the things we talked about don't focus too much on the actual stages of of, of uh, embryonic development but do know the difference between a gratula a blastula a neurula an embryo a zygote what what is implantation what is differentiation which is the process of the cells which could become any cells to actually become specific organs and, and functions um, know the basis of, of the menstrual cycle uh, what is puberty and what it's all about and uh, those support systems for the gestation and things like that all right uh, it's not going to be too hard of a quiz, but definitely get through those key terms so you can understand the, the topic. All right. So um, good luck, and that's it. One last idea that I forgot to mention is that pregnancy is actually maintained by a delicate balance of horm hormone control, both at the fetus side and at the mother's side. Uh, 
but especially the mother's side because the whole uterine wall the whole um, thickening of the uterine wall which w which was uh, created leading up to the pregnancy has to be maintained for the entire nine months until the baby is ready to come out so that means that those hormones progesterone uh, luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone will have to uh, will have to uh, be played in especially the luteinizing hormone which actually um, enhances makes the, the ovaries uh, produce progesterone and make to maintain the, the lining of the endo endometrial wall of the uterus which means basically that during the pregnancy progesterone levels and LH levels are, ex are high and so you can actually use that as a way to test your um, to see if you're pregnant because very early into the pregnancy that those hormones will be high so that's how uh, a pregnancy tests uh, work because they basically can detect the, the the elevated uh, presence of of those hormones which are supposed to go down uh, after menstruation so uh, and it actually become even more elevated than normal uh, to maintain that uh, for the baby so just wanted to clarify that and to have the so you have a general idea that it takes a very delicate balance of hormonal control in order to maintain pregnancy all right One more thing that I forgot to talk about in terms of uh, successful pregnancies. Uh, it's more than just the timing of the hormonal environment and the uh, timing of the uh, factors inside the womb. Everything needs to be perfect. Uh, yes, the, the environment inside needs to be perfect. The growth of the baby needs to be perfect. It needs to divide the right way. The embryo needs to be uh, genetically viable. I mean, there can't be any genetic anomalies or anything like that. Uh, but also, the other factor that I forgot to mention is the correct timing of the actual fertilization or implantation. In other words, in order for the embryo to successively f f implant and then, then successfully grow into the baby, it needs to happen, uh, the fertilization needs to happen at a specific place. You know, you see here in the menstrual cycle that it has to happen between the 11th and the 15th day for the cycle uh, in order for that uh, fertilization to happen soon enough so that the right after ovulation so that the uh, egg will grow uh, and develop in time to be a neurula to successively implant in it at the time when the uh, when the uh, uterine wall is the intramitral wall is ready for it you know and that also another thing that I mentioned in another presentation that is kind of was kind of confusing the uterine wall is not the placenta the placenta is actually produced by the embryo that a part of the chorion actually grows and develops and it differentiates into the placenta but the placenta cannot connect to the uterine wall if the endometrial is not ready with that all those blood vessels and the cushioning of the extra tissue and layer or the thickening of the wall um, of the layer so that means that the, in order for a successful pregnancy to take place you have to, the timing needs to be perfect uh, for that so there's a lot of ways to prevent pregnancy you can avoid uh, the fertile periods uh, you can also uh, avoid ovulation which is what the, how the pill works uh, you can also uh, if there's no viable sperm in other words if let's say for example the vas deferens was cut in the males that's what the that's what the um, that surgery that males can get to to does basically they it customize that for instance which doesn't allow any semen to be produced and go towards the the uh, uh, ve seminal vesicle and also if you don't have a viable uterine environment in other words if it's not the fertilization didn't happen at the right place it was too late or the uterine environment did not was not produced properly so that means the progesterone levels were controlled and it was not produced properly all of that will prevent the pregnancy then once you actually get pregnant if the pr progesterone levels don't stay up the LH or hormones don't stay up the uterine wall will not stay the way it is it will f fail they can also fail that the embryo has genetic problems it can also fail because of environmental conditions which cause problems for the growth of the baby uh, or because of the chemicals which interact with the, with the, with the fetus um, there are a lot of things that need to be perfect in order for a successful pregnancy to take place. And even after pregnancy, uh, the, the, the mom has to be uh, to feed the baby with the milk and because the baby is completely rely on the milk. So it's very, very peculiar the way the mammal uh, sexual reproduction takes place. And it's very peculiar because it's, it's designed so that ma mother and child work together at the very beginning, almost like the child is a parasite to the mother. And then even after the birth, they rely solely on the mother for nutrition. But at least the mother doesn't have to go hunt because the milk is right there next to her. So it's very interesting. And that's um, human sexual reproduction. All right. Thank you.